Hi, in this video, we will see about uh, parallelogram law of forces. Okay. Parallelogram law of forces. Now let us see the statement of parallelogram law of forces first. The parallelogram law of forces says that if two forces, if two forces F1 and F2 acting at a point are represented by represented by two adjacent sides of a parallelogram two adjacent sides of a parallelogram then their resultant is represented by the diagonal of the parallelogram passing through the point of intersection of both the forces this is what the statement of parallelogram law of forces i repeat once again if two forces F1 and F2 acting at a point are represented by two adjacent sides of a parallelogram, then their resultant is represented by diagonal of the parallelogram passing through point of intersection of both the forces. This is the statement of parallelogram law of forces. Okay. Now let us formulate the equation for this resultant R magnitude of the resultant force even we will formulate the equation for uh, the direction of the resultant force okay for that uh, let me take theta as angle between the forces f1 and f2 and let me take uh, alpha as angle of the resultant force with respect to the force f1 okay now for derivation purpose what I will do is I will extend this by dotted line ok. I will call this as point A, B, C, D. I will call this point as point number E ok. Now we will formulate the equation for magnitude of the resultant force magnitude of the resultant force resultant force that is r okay for that i'll consider uh, the right angle triangle uh, cea from right angle triangle CEA, if I apply Pythagoras theorem, it will be R square is equal to one more thing here, whatever the magnitude of the force F1 is there, here same magnitude will be there, correct? F1, so here it will be F2, okay? The magnitude of the force is represented by length of the vector. Length of the vector means length of AB is equal to length of DC. Therefore, DC will be equal to force F1, magnitude F1. Similarly, BC will be equal to F2. Okay? Because the sides of the opposite sides of the parallelogram are equal. Correct? Therefore, DC is equal to F1, BC is equal to F2. R square is equal to a e square plus c e square a e square plus c e square 
Now, R square is equal to A E is there no? I'll I'll expand this as A B plus B E. A B plus B E whole square plus C E square. Okay. Now we know that A B is equal to what? The length A B is equal to magnitude F one. Correct? F one. Then uh, length B E. We have the length B E, and we have one more length C E. Uh, here the angle will be how much? It will be theta only. Okay, whatever the angle we have here, the same same angle will be there theta only. So consider the angle uh, the right angle triangle C E B. Okay, from right angle triangle C E B. If you measure cos theta. Cos theta is equal to adjacent B divided by hypotenuse F2. F2. Therefore, the length B is equal to F2 cos theta. Similarly, if you measure sin theta in the same triangle, sin theta is equal to sin theta is equal to opposite by Hypotenuse that is C E by F two, C E by F two, which is equal to C E is equal to F two sine theta, F two sine theta. Now we got the value of A B B E and C E. Substitute. We can call this as equation number one. Therefore, equation one becomes equation one becomes R square is equal to is equal to AB is nothing but F1 square means F1 plus BE is equal to F2 cos theta F2 cos theta whole square plus CE is nothing but F2 sine theta whole square which becomes F2 square sine square theta. Okay. Now This equation is in the form of a plus b whole square. You expand this. R square is equal to. It is in the form of a plus b whole square, which is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. F1 square plus f2 square cos square theta plus 2f1 f2 cos theta plus f2 square sine square theta, which is equal to. F1 square plus you take F2 square common in this equation and this equation, so it becomes sine square theta plus cos square theta. So the remaining term is 2 F1 F2 cos theta. Okay, the value of sine square theta plus cos square theta is one. Therefore, R square is equal to R square. Is equal to f1 square plus f2 square plus 2 f1 f2 cos theta. Therefore, the magnitude of the resultant force R is equal to taking square root on both sides, root of f1 square plus f2 square plus 2 f1 f2 cos theta. So this is the equation for magnitude of the resultant force. Now we'll formulate the equation for direction of the resultant force. Direction of the resultant force. Direction of the resultant force. So that is alpha. We we'll formulate the equation for the angle alpha. Okay. To find the value of alpha, again we'll consider the same triangle CEA. Okay. From triangle CEA. From triangle CEA, measure tan alpha. Tan alpha is equal to 
tan alpha is equal to opposite by adjacent. Opposite is CE, adjacent is AE. CE by AE. CE by AE. Again, I will expand this AE as tan alpha is equal to CE divided by AE is equal to A is equal to AB plus BE. AB plus BE. Therefore, tan alpha is equal to C is nothing but F2 sin theta. F2 sin theta divided by AB is F1. F1 plus B is what? B is equal to F2 cos theta. F2 cos theta. Therefore, alpha is equal to tan inverse of F2 sin theta divided by F1 plus F2 cos theta. So, this is the equation for direction of the resultant force. Okay. This completes the parallelogram law of forces. Thank you.